Awesome. Well, I just wanted to meet with Melody real quick in this Zoom room. And Melody is a person that I met not too long ago through Robert Hollis. And she is an amazing person uh, because her heart is to serve people. And it's very obvious. And so I was just kind of drawn to her because I just love her heart. And so I had asked Melody if she wanted to do a short video with me uh, just to share some things. And we were talking actually before we click record, we were talking about mindset and how important it is. And I'm real big into learning how to renew your mind and things like that. So I wanted to just make a short little video with Melody. It's, it's actually kind of an honor to, to be talking with her. She helps a ton of people. And so Melody, thank you for doing this. Well, thank you, Dawn. And I, I think you and I click really because we have a lot of the same, the same characteristics, the same heart. You know, we like to help people. And I think that's why you and I were drawn to one another because right. we, we both understand the importance of personal development and how important that is to share with people and what kind of an impact that can make in somebody's life like it is in mine, like it has yours. Right, and you know, I was thinking, people are always just trying to make money, they're looking for ways to make money, and they don't really think about that most of it starts with the mindset. And something that's just been on my heart lately that I kind of wanted to discuss is we, we've have all, we have all these years and habits and mindsets that we don't even realize are there, and then we, we want to get into something, we want to make money, and we don't understand why things aren't happening, right? And it really starts with our mindset. We have all these habits or, what is it, limiting? Limiting beliefs, right? And that's how, what happened with me, um, especially, you know, our, we both have the same mentor in Robert Hollis, an incredible gentleman, big heart, um, you know, he'll just teach everybody everything he knows so they can have success. And I've seen that happen over and over. And when I first started learning from him, I kept seeing everybody else have success. Like, why are they making money and I'm not? Why is their ownership paid and, and mine isn't? Or, you know, things like that. And bottom line, Don, it was the way that I was thinking. These six inches between my ears. And like you and I, we started talking about earlier, for everybody, for everybody, it really is about self-confidence, right? We go out there and we try to share things with somebody and maybe somebody doesn't even look at what we shared with them because they don't see that we're confident. We didn't come off. Our posture wasn't as if we were confident in what we were sharing, why, why they should see this. Why should they should read this book or, or um, listen to this audio or watch this video? It comes from our confidence. Um, for myself, a lot of it was self-worth. I didn't believe I was worthy of success. I didn't even think about it, but I didn't. I didn't believe that I could be successful. See, because I had so many things, challenges, we'll call them challenges in my life. You know, what, losing our home and, and living out of a car for a year and a half and not being able to feed my kids. All of these things broke me down. They broke me uh, emotionally, spiritually, physically. You know, I, was, I had a lot of challenges. And financially, I was struggling big time. I didn't believe because of all of these things that I felt like I failed in. I didn't feel like I could be a success. So it does start here with our mindset. We have to learn to be able to peel the, the layers from our limiting beliefs away. And as we do that, it will restore us into that strong, positive, self-loving person that we should be. See, I truly believe each and every one of us, 
was uniquely and purposefully made. We all have talents and gifts that we should be sharing. And I feel like as long as I'm doing that, I'm fulfilling my purpose in life. That's where I get my greatest joy. That's where my happiness comes from. Being able to share those gifts with other people. Things that helped me with my limiting beliefs, with my self-confidence, with feeling like I am worthy. Right. When I could share those with other people and see the changes in their life, that's where I get my true happiness. And I think, you know, one of the things that I learned too is when you start something or a new venture or you make a decision that you want to head in a certain direction, um, you know, so many people try to do it by themselves. And I'm starting to understand, you know, really how valuable it is to have a mentor. And I know um, Robert Hollis is your mentor. And I actually took a couple courses with him and I just learned so much. I have a, a big notebook of notes. Um, I have a mentor. I have a spiritual mentor, uh, George Maitland. And I talk to him daily. I try to talk to him daily. But um, I'm just starting to understand and really how important it is to have a mentor because if not, then we just kind of keep going back to the same old habits. It's just so ingrained in our mind of these habits from years and years of just kind of doing the same thing. So, yeah, it's just mentors are super, super important to have. Right. One of the things that I learned from Robert early on, because he would always ask me, how do you know that? And it could be about anything. But he'd always ask, how do you know that? How do you know that? And it really started making me think and realizing many of the things that I believed to be true came from my childhood, my upbringing. You know, we're all born in different kinds of cultures or neighborhoods or whatever. We all have different elements to our bringing up. So even the fact that um, I realized that I was brought up to believe you get married, you have babies, your husband takes care of you. So when I lost my husband unexpectedly, still with two young boys at home, I didn't know what to do. I was like, wait a minute. This is not how it's supposed to happen. I was told and I believe that my husband's going to take care of me. So when I was all of a sudden a single parent, sole provider for my home, wow that I didn't know what to do. I, I, you know, like I said, we were homeless for a year and a half. And when I say homeless, I don't mean we had family and friends to stay with. We had my car. Wow. Yes. So, yeah, it's like, so if we could just ask ourselves, how do we know that? How do we know that to be true? Right. About everything. You People base truth on their past experiences. Right. But think about all of the past experiences that weren't ideal. Right. That were bad experiences. The things, you know, and I look back at my own life, and I think I've shared this before, but, you know, I could have taken all of those things, being diagnosed with stage four cancer, having to go through chemotherapy for years, being sent home to die. I could have, lo losing my husband, losing our dream home, losing almost all of our possessions, all of these things, I could have taken all of those past experiences and let them mold me into a bitter, angry person. We all have a choice. What are we going to do with those past experiences? And how can we make them, turn them into something positive? Right. And, we, and it's a definitely a choice. And I think for many years, I just thought I was just, it wasn't my choice. It was just every, everybody else's fault. 
why I was at where I was at. And then it wasn't until recent, I'm ashamed to say, but until recently, I was like, wow, I, did, I really put myself in this situation. I, my choices have gotten me where I am today. And I think when you can get to that point, when you, when you take responsibility for where you're at, I think that's kind of like the beginning stages of growth until then, you know, just blaming everybody and everything for where you're at. You're just, you're just going to remain in the same, same place. Right. Well, one of my funniest memories when I first met Robert was we were in um, another state at a big event and I was there by myself. I mean, there, I knew people that were there but I went by myself to this event and he was finally sitting by himself in the corner of the restaurant there. And I walked up to him and I said, do you mind if I sit down? You know, because he was that friendly, that, that safe place for me. And he said, Melody, when are you going to stop playing the old DVD? And when are you going to stop being that victim? playing that victim, having that victim mentality. That's exactly what, where I was. I was so hurt when he said that to me. I'm like, I didn't even say any words, you know, but he could tell by my posture. By the way, I guess my head was hanging down by, he, you could just read it on my face. And I recognize that now because as I meet people and talk to people and coach and mentor people, I see that in them. But I was just like, oh, he's, what is he inside my head? How does he do this? You know? Right. So, um, yeah, oftentimes it's, it really comes every single morning. We wake up with a choice. What are we going to do? How are we going to live? I choose to be grateful. Even when... I didn't have everything that I wanted, even when I couldn't pay all of my bills, even when I had to oh, pay the electricity or pay the water. Well, I wouldn't pay the electricity because I need the internet. Wow. So I choose every single day to be happy, to be in that attitude of gratitude because really when you're grateful for things, yep. it's really hard to have a bad day. Really, really hard. Being grateful is extremely powerful. And I find that when I have bad days or just kind of my mindset's just like, I, I remember, ah, if I just think of one thing to be grateful for, it like changes everything almost instantly. Mm -hmm. So it's very powerful. Right. And I also use, I have a morning ritual that I use to empower myself because all day long, every day, I don't care who you are, thing, life is going to throw things at you. So I choose to start my day with prayer. I also use the six-phase meditation. I also use write in my gratitude journal three to five things every day at least, um, different things every day. So when you wake up and you don't feel grateful, you can flip back in those pages and see right. those things. I also read out loud the God Memorandum every day. Each and every one of those, these things that I, I talk about, I'm willing to give to anybody because I know how powerful they were. So it's like putting an armor on every morning. And like right. I start my day with prayer. So none of the pressures of the day are going to be on me. I just say, Lord, bring me the people you want me to talk to today and put the words in my mouth that they need to hear. Right. And you set, you set your mindset for the day. You don't let the day dictate how you're going to do. So that's, right. what, that's what's so powerful about that. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that, oh, I don't get a flat tire or, you know, something doesn't happen unexpectedly through the day, but I don't let it change the dynamics of my day. You know, when I first started doing this, it was the people around me, the people around me the, in, in my um, close proximity that noticed the changes. See, when we're negative, that negativity breeds negativity. When we're positive, we can also cause 
a positive reaction. So that self-talk that we talk to ourselves, we can empower ourselves all day long, but if we don't change our thoughts, the words that we use, our vocabulary that we use with our family and friends, and the words that we say to ourselves, if we don't change some of those words, we're gonna unravel all that armor that we put on. It's not gonna do us any good. And you know, what I'm learning too is it takes time. Like, sometimes I'm like, ah, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna change my mindset. And it'll last like a day. <laughs> so it takes time, you know? Mm -hmm. Like daily takes, learning. Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly why I created that 30 day program because it takes 30 days, around 30 days, to create a habit, good or bad. So I like to show people how to create success habits, how to create habits of gratitude, being, starting a day as a morning ritual, being able to do the things, you know, to where each and every day that becomes second nature, that's going to give you the results that you want in your life, in your relationship, in your business. We need to learn to be consistent in the things that we we want to help change us. Right. I was haunted. Um, it was like 15, 20 times every day I would see this quote, and I'm sure you've heard it many times, but the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting to get different results. That's what I was doing. Yeah. And nothing was changing, and that's when, when I finally broke down and I... I reached out to Robert and I said, please, will you please mentor me, personally mentor me? And he called me on the phone immediately and he said, Melody, I would love to mentor you, but you're going to have to do what I do to get the results that I got. Now, I had been following him. I had been taking notes. I had journal after journal after journal of notes taken from events and, and every time he spoke anywhere. But I, it was all head knowledge. I wasn't doing all of those things. I didn't want to do some of those things. They made me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't getting the results. So, yeah, I guess I just got desperate enough. Yep. It's amazing because when it's time to do the uncomfortable things, it's amazing all the excuses that we can come up with to not do the, it's just, I, I'm still, I still get amazed at all the like excuses that bombard my head. I'm part of a, like a running club. I run on Mondays and Thursdays and every single morning, it's like all these excuses. Oh, you don't need to go to, Oh, it's raining. Oh, you know, you have a, it's just amazing. Like mm -hmm. the things we do to, to avoid being uncomfortable. Exactly. But and there, it's endless. But yeah. There really is a difference between a reason and an excuse. Yep. We use everything we can get our hands on for, oh, I forgot I got to make these phone calls right now and just not do what we need to do. We use a lot of avoidance behaviors to keep us from getting any change in our life. Yep. So the most important thing I think I could say is find somebody who is documented in getting the results that you're looking to get and make sure they're documented in teaching other people to get the same success. That was key for me because there's a lot of incredible you know, personal development and this and that. But for me, I needed a mentor. I needed somebody to call me out on my excuses. To call me out on my stuff. And I was, I sent um, Robert a, a message the other day. And it says, thank you for not being Willy Wonka and not sugarcoating things. Because you know, we all want to surround ourselves with yes men or yes women. You know, people that are going to say, good job, good job. And, and root us on doing the wrong things. But if we don't have somebody that can say, 
hey, Melody, why are you doing that? Or why aren't you doing this? I thought, I thought you wanted to be successful. I thought you wanted to help people. Then you got to start doing this. And I remember putting Robert off for two and a half years. He told me, you got to start making videos. Two and a half years, I put him off. <laughs> I had every excuse, every excuse there was. And I remember talking to him on the phone and said, why would anybody, why would anybody watch a video with me in it? What do I have that's important to say? Why would they continue listening even if they found me by accident? But you know, that very first video I did was about comfort zones. And I was really out of mind. That was the only subject I could even think about talking about. And I had 56 people contact me that I've never heard of before. Never had anything, you know, no mutual friends, nothing. 56 people reach out to me and say, thank you, Melody, for your message. Thank you. I thought I was the only one that felt this way. Where did you learn to think this way? What, you know, where can I learn this to? 56 people that I was able to touch and give them the same information I had. Out of the blue, can you imagine, especially those who are in online business marketers or, or network marketers or even brick and mortar businesses, can you imagine having 56 new customers come to you every day? Every day. Wow. Just because you got a little bit uncomfortable? Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Melody. I just, you know, I just wanted to have, make a short little video and, you know, I'm glad you agreed to do this with me. And, you know, I've been learning so much lately and, you know, I was telling you earlier, you popped it in my mind. I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if Melody did a little video with me and we just share some of the things we're learning. So. Uh, just thank you for, you know, taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know you're helping tons of people and just very grateful for you. Um, I love your new page. Uh, what is it called? Melody Here to Serve. Melody was, Here to Serve You. What yeah. a great title. And so just, you know, the heart of that, because I'm, I'm learning how to change my mindset of serving people, you know, and I'm, and so I find myself being attracted to people like you and that are, that want to help people and I want to stay connected. You know, I mean, I have mentors and I, you know, I stay connected with my mentor, but I always love reaching out to other people that are serving. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you too, sweetie. And keep doing what you're doing. Keep shining bright. You know, I just love your heart. Share it with the world. They all need to know that um, you've got some incredible, incredible knowledge because you've been working on yourself. And you'll be able to point, guide, and direct them to what it is that can make a difference in their life, like it has yours. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. All right.